Hello, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Happy Saturday, wherever you are. I hope that uh, you're having a really wonderful weekend and you're doing something creative. And I just ripped out that entire neckline seam because I, hello Louise, good day to you too. Um, I decided that I think I'm gonna sew the collar on my way because <laughs> um, I just realized like I think there's an easier way to do it but I'm also going to top stitch the collar today too like some decorative stitching so um this is kind of this is kind of in the way I kind of wanted a bigger view you know up higher so so let's see so I just took out this entire center front like all along the neck right here I just took that whole thing out which is good because it's kind of bugging me that it was um, up high like this. You know, the, the width of the hem wasn't like this, was where it should be. So um, I was going to fix that anyway. And then I was like, you know what? There's a way to sew the collar. Hello, Eliza. Where I don't have to um, sew it like a cuff in a way. I'm going to just pop open the side seam and then do it through the side seam as a seam. So I feel like um, this may seem kind of tricky and look like it's tricky, but it's probably a lot easier to sew for most people. It just means that my jacket won't look as reversible on the side seam because I'm gonna, I'm gonna edge stitch it shut. But I'm not planning on reversing mine and you could hand sew it shut and it would be fine. So anyway, I'm going to top stitch my neck, my collar. Oh shoot, I had wanted to sew the um, center back seam before I changed the thread. Maybe if I, I'm gonna put a really short stitch length and we'll just see, we'll see how it looks. Because um, there is a um, center back seam on the neck band. It's a really long piece. And I don't, you know, I'm gonna like probably press that seam open. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna do the other end because I know my collar's too long and I'm gonna trim it off. So I'll do that and I'll trim that end off since I got some of the, in, the uh, fusible interfacing onto the collar. I'm really excited about this jacket. I'm jumping right into it today because I was thinking I could maybe squeeze in my buttonholes on my archer if we have time. And if we don't have time, I will definitely do that because I know a lot of people would like to see buttonhole placing. Um, I don't, I do not like do anything mysterious. Um, there are like really great tutorials out there for it. I just use experience and common sense. That's all. And uh, sometimes I make mistakes, but you know, I figure like you can see what, how I would go about doing it and um, I'll pull up my home machine and maybe I'll just sew some of them. But I'll show you how I'm going to place them. I haven't even placed them yet, and I bought the buttons today. So, so I'm going to do the center back collar seam here. I'm using a pretty small stitch, I think. And I'm hoping if I do a small stitch that when I press the seam open, hi Karen, that it uh, won't show the pink thread. If it does, I'm going to switch to black, and I'm going to sew it again with black. So I did a pretty narrow. Oh yeah, look at that. That's pretty good. I'm I'm pleased with that. So that was my quick and dirty. <laughs> hi Ida. Hi hi. <laughs> How are you? So I don't know if some of you noticed, but I started a Facebook group. I know some people have requested to be in it, and I don't know how to accept them yet. <laughs> so I will figure that out. Apparently, I probably need to be on a computer to do it and not on my phone. So um, I promise I'll figure that out. So I'm sorry that I haven't yet. I'm not a Facebook um, user primarily. I do have the account, but I just don't use it very much. I'm gonna press that open. I had to tilt that three times to turn it on. Let's see here. So I think I'm just going to do straight parallel lines down my collar, the whole length of it. Um, I was going to measure the width and see how far apart my lines should be. So it looks like it's about seven inches wide. 
So if I did half inch lines, let's see. If I do half inch lines, maybe that's too narrow, maybe three quarter. Maybe five eighths, five eighths seems good, but what would that be? What would happen? You know, like, uh, will I end up with a weird, um, you know, number of them? Wait, one, two, three, four, five, five, <clears throat> five, five, and then there's another inch and three eighths, so that leaves three quarters of an inch. Hello, Malin. Um, the name of the, the Facebook group is um, So So Live Sewists. And um, you can find So So Live on Facebook. Um, and then somewhere in there, I think on the right hand side of the page, it says, look at this group, this page's groups. Tell me what, tell me like, is that, is that how it works, you guys? <laughs> I am in a couple of groups where people invited me because I was already friends with them. And I probably only had like two people following that page. So it's not like I could really invite you guys. So I think you have to, I don't really know. I really don't know. Maybe I will try and look at it from like my husband's, oh, my husband hasn't logged into his Facebook in years. Maybe my daughter has. <laughs> I'll just look at it. <laughs> so yeah, let me know how to do it. I'm counting on you guys. So if that left um, one and three eighths, it's in three quarters. That's three eighths and then five eighths from the edge. I think that could work. You know, let's see how straight can I sew? <laughs> so, um, three eighths and five eighths. So maybe if I do, if I do the first one an inch in, I'm not sure about that. If I do it a half inch in just from the edge, that means like one line will be one eighth. Oh, perfect, Malin. Good to know. I love that it highlights it. It's so funny. You found it? Okay, good. So maybe it's not as hard as I, I think. I'm just not that great. I find it really confusing to use Facebook. And maybe it's because I'm the administrator, and so it's asking me all kinds of things at the same time. So sometimes I'll be like, view this as a visitor, and it's a little easier for me to see what other people see. But then again, I still feel like I'm still seeing all this clutter. You know what I mean? I don't get it. All right, um, I love doing the stitching, but I don't like doing math in front of people. Well, I don't mind it, but I'm just terrible at it. And I was just gonna sit here and do a little bit. This is what I'm making. You guys know that, right? So this is the collar. Um, that's what I'm gonna stitch it around it. So I was just thinking here, I'm gonna do this. All right, here is my collar, and I'm gonna do, let's see, if it really is seven, it's a little over seven. So let's see, what if I did this? I marked the middle, okay, marked the middle, and then um, I have, here's my seam allowance, here's my seam allowance, this is literally how I sometimes figure things out, you guys. I just try it out. This isn't centered, I can tell. So it's three and a quarter plus. It's three and a quarter minus. So let's see. Let's move it a little bit here. And now I'll make a denotation that that's my new line. Sometimes you get confused which line you're using, right? So now I'm left with three and a quarter. And let's see, if I did a half inch, it would be here, 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 and here. Kind of like that. I would like my line to be further away from my seam line. 
because um, I don't want it to look wiggly if I'm not very good at stitching it, right? I, like having it an eighth of an inch seemed a little risky. <laughs> so um, that works. It seems kind of close together. So let's see, what if I did five eighths like I was thinking before? Five eighths. Five eighths, five eighths, five eighths. And then I'm back to this like right there. Or I could do like a half inch seam allowance, right? Hmm. That's fewer lines too, which I like the idea of. Five eighths, five eighths. Yeah, so. That one got real close there. Five eighths, five eighths, five eighths. Yeah, it's gets, gets getting close. So what, maybe what I'll do is I'll just do these. I won't do one here. Hi, Nancy. How's it going? That's what I'm gonna try. Um, I think that I will get into trouble at some point because I don't have it marked on here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna iron a line down the middle and then I'm gonna go from that point to the left and the right. So just a second, let me iron this down the middle. too much because I, I don't want it to be a permanent crease, you know? This fabric press is really nice. Hey, let's hope we like this because I don't want to take out top stitching. And I hope this isn't too tedious for you guys. I'm going to try and do it quickly and straight. <laughs> so I'm going to do my first line down the middle. That way I have a guide. Oh, I'm already going to take this out. I'm going to make the stitches much longer. I forgot I had already changed it. See how it's terrible taking out tiny stitches. I did pretty good last stream. The seam ripper did not come out to the very end. Oh, thanks, Karen. It's a sewing chair. Um, I just got it at the local fabric store. I have too many of them right now. I actually have three in here, and I only need probably two. Maybe I have four. Do I have four? I think I only have three. But um, it's nice because the front of the chair is straight. You know, like it's not. You know, like an office chair has um, five legs. And so the, it's like a, an asterisk, you know, the, the, the leg pattern with the wheels. And one of those legs will get stuck under my foot pedal and um, it'll sometimes start my machine for me. Hi, Julia. So um, when I saw that they had these sewing specific chairs, they're a little like, the patterns are a little cutesy on them. Um, the seat also lifts up so you can put something in it, but I don't because I know I'd forget something there. But um, what I like is that it is on wheels. Um, it's not a very uh, big profile chair and it is straight in front so there's no nothing hitting my presser, my foot pedal. Because my foot pedal is really big and it sits off the ground at the front um, like towards me about this much. And so sometimes what will happen is even my toe, I'll clip it and it'll start the machine. If my hand's there, it's kind of dangerous or if my, my work is there. So... Um, it kind of eliminates that. All right, I'm gonna um, turn off my phone and I'm going to do some top stitching. So I just figured out in a very basic way, hi Carol, how I wanted to space my stitching if just in case you guys are just joining me. I'm just gonna stitching this collar on my Howry jacket. So what I did was I just pressed down the middle. I'm gonna do the middle line first. Why is my machine vibrating? Okay, the pressing line's genius. I can go pretty quick. 
It's so long. All right, almost halfway. I got a little bit off. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, Nancy. You can't get close enough, that, exactly. And I would have to swing it around a little bit, which sometimes I would almost get dumped off the chair. And not to mention those kinds of wheels grab the threads really, really good. Um, and this one, uh, I don't have problems with threads. There's probably some on the wheels, don't get me wrong, but. All right, so there's my first one. Let's see, I need a line on my machine. I'm gonna go get some washi tape, we'll be right back. Dang it, I don't know, my puppy found this roll of washi tape yesterday and I thought I took it away from him and now I can't find it. Yeah, right, Nancy. Okay, so um, I'm gonna use washi tape, uh, just in case you guys don't know what it is, I'm not actually very well versed in it, but um, it's a paper tape. It's not very sticky. You can pick it up and move it. It's great decoratively, it's not very functional. Um, a lot of scrapbookers and journalers use it. And um, I learned later on that knitters and crocheters like it and other people to hold their place in their pattern because they can pick it back up and move it when they get to their next line. And so we ended up designing some that is in this knit print fabric that I had made and uh thus was my world of washi and i made a harry potter one too with this one this little narrow one's gonna work better i think but i like using it on my machine you know to um figure out where i want to stitch something so i need a line that is going to allow me so right here is where i, I kind of need my line my scientific line making there we go I don't need the line right away from the needle because this is so wide so if I line my fabric up to this my next line over from this is going to be 5 8 So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this, not where I'm sewing. <laughs> and um, let's, let's just hope it goes well. I've never done this before. I thought about this while I was, uh, I hate sewing on the left. I wanna look over here. So there are really great tools for doing this. I'm not doing it in this really um, low budget way that I'm doing it. You, especially on a home machine, you can get this little arm that attaches to the shank of your foot. It's just a little plastic thing and you can slide it. And what it does is you can put a little like hovering foot there and you can go by that. It's They're great. I have one on my home machine. I haven't pulled it out in years. It's really good though. Oh yeah, here's where I got a little wiggly. There's a lot of ways people do stuff like this. Quilters are genius at it. Did I literally just, I literally just got a tuck. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, I'm speechless. Do, do you think I wanna start and stop right there? No, I don't wanna start and stop right there, but you know what? I'm gonna put one at the center back neck. Am I allowed to do that? That's what I'm gonna do. I can't, I can't do the, I, I can't, I can't have a tuck. <laughs> At least my stitches are kind of long, right? Oh my gosh, why did it do that? Why? That, that annoyed me. I hardly get annoyed <laughs> anymore, not with sewing. <laughs> I'll put the start stop at the center back neck. 
Maybe there's a, there could be a bubble in my interfacing. Maybe that's what's going on. That makes sense. The interfacing was so black, it was really hard for me to um, see it, you know? Yeah, right? Sad face. Just take it right up to here. I, I like the stitching lines though. They look, they're not the straightest. Um, I feel like I'm left-handed sewing right now, sewing on the side of my needle. And the fabric's pretty wiggly. And I'm, I'm not like an expert at sewing straight lines, that's for darn sure. But I do like the way they look handmade. It'd be so nice to hand stitch this if you liked hand stitching. <laughs> yeah, bummer indeed. But we're going to move on. And only you guys are going to know that that's there. And my hair. My hair will know. All right. Moving on. Where was that spot? Okay. It looks okay. All right. Moving on. Now, the reason I'm doing this on a single layer of fabric, which... Same spot, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry, that really makes me mad. <laughs> Ooh, crazy making, crazy making. <sighs> I'm gonna pull the fabric when I get to that point. Um, the reason I'm not sewing this on um, through the lining is because I don't want start and stops at the ends of my collar because what you would normally do is sew your collar all around three sides and then turn it and then you would sew your collar on. Um, I don't want to stitch my collar when the collar is completely sewn because I'd have starts and stops at the finished end. It would be like uh, starting and stopping at these little finished ends of my cuff, you know what I mean? Oh God, Louise, yeah, it just happens, it happens to me all the time. Um, it happens to everybody. I don't edit my videos. Like if I were editing my videos, um, you can't even see, why aren't you guys telling me to brighten it up? Um, I'm, just, I'm blaming it on you, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, I can't, I don't edit my videos, so. Otherwise, you'd see only the good stuff. Is that better? How about this? I was setting up my camera earlier for my home machine. Would you like a little brighter? Um, I'm going to put something over onto the left so you're not blinded by my table, okay? Look at this nice pretty pink. How's that? Better? Yeah, better. You didn't even see those tucks, did you? <laughs> okay. If it happens again, I'm going to pretend like I never saw it. And I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to hold it differently now. Maybe this is a sewing fairy telling me something. This is the sewing fairy telling me something. What is it? Microphone's on. <laughs> maybe I needed, maybe it was a sewing fairy telling me I needed to brighten up the, um, the field there, the field of view. Okay, here we go. We're getting to that spot. Now I'm all scared. I made it. So yeah, I was actually puzzling about how I was going to do this. And then I realized the, re the reason I was puzzling over it was that I kept picturing the collar already sewn and I knew that that wasn't right. So, all right, it is not the straightest. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Okay, let's move our line again. 
Five eighths. So it looks like we can probably go to the um, end of the machine here. So that's what I'm going to use as my guide. And I'm just going to look at it here. In general, this machine can sew straighter than me. So I'm going to trust it. Oh, these lines look really wiggly, you guys. <laughs> I think I might get asked if I've made this. Okay, I'm getting to my trouble spot over here. <laughs> Okay. I want these lines. I know they're not going to be that great, but I just want them. I think when the collar's all like scrunched up around my neck, it's going to be fine. Okay, so let's see here. So now I'm going to put my washi tape back on here. Like that. I'm using a, a, a cone of thread as a weight. <laughs> That's what I keep reaching for. So basically, it's kind of the width of my washi tape. There we go. What, what are you guys doing? Tell me what you guys are sewing. <laughs> you have to sit here and watch me do all these lines. I just want to stare here, but um, I'm worried I'm going to get that tuck. I've got some, a uh, little bit of trauma over that. I'm trying also not to slow down and speed up because it will change my stitch. probably some of the worst sewing I've ever done live on camera. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, one more here. It's my last one, maybe. Eh, maybe not. Okay, right here. Oh, Kochi Kimono, is that from your Needle Sharp box, Nancy? Very cool. Can't wait to see it. The weather is so rainy here. It's such a perfect day to sit and sew, but I personally think every day is a perfect day to sit and sew. Hi, Christina. Aw. Has it been cold there? Hi. Let's see, Ida. What are you? Oh, no. Fragile fabric, so small. Oh, I hate that, Ida. You're knitting, duh. <laughs> It looks, when I'm sewing, it looks so straight, you know, like as I'm doing it. And then I look at these and I'm like, huh? oh my God, there's a tuck right there. I think I need to pull on this a little more so I don't get tucked, but I don't want to stretch out my collar. Okay, and if I have a 3 8 inch seam, I think that's good. I'm not going to do one more. I don't want it to really highlight. I have two tucks there. Jerk. All right, I'm just going to try and press it out. Oh, you had snow in Portland again. You know, I saw that on someone's um, page that they got snow this week. I was like, again? I, was, I actually looked to see when she posted that because I was like, 
Huh, is she talking about two weeks ago? Oh, I'm sorry, Karen. That's a bummer. Oh, right, Nancy. Yeah, because you got shorted a little bit. That happens, you know? We do that ourselves, right? When we're shopping at the fabric store. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm excited that I am looking at something on this side of my needle. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there's my little mark there. Portland, Oregon. Yeah, Nancy. Ooh. Oh, you're going to a sewing meetup, Melin? That sounds so fun. All right, here we go. Ugh, I'm getting a little far away. I'm not convinced that that's 5 8 Let's see. 5 8 yeah, I think this can move a little bit. I'm trusting where the needle is more than where the washi is. I think that's correct. It's like an eighth of an inch. I get to go to my new place today. I'm hoping I get keys. <laughs> they do do that, Julia, but sometimes there's just meetups. Oh, you work on the Jutland pants. I want to make another pair of those. That's fun. My local uh, so fabric store has them, Julia. I went to one of them. I brought my mach my home sh machine and I worked on a little pet quilt. It was fun. It's fun to see what all the things people are doing. They were all quilters, but like one of them was making a rug. It's pretty cool. I, I wanted, I was like, okay, how do I do that? I want to make, I want to, to make my bias strips work for her project. And I keep looking at it and I'm like, I just don't think my bias strips will work. That one's a little further. That's the, let's measure this better. Okay. <laughs> oh, we'll be at school. That's great. Yeah, you need so much space, right, Julia? And um, it's not even just like space. Like you need actual space around the machine too. So it is it is really hard to accommodate groups of sewers. I started a, or started, I started, I joined a sewing club local to me. I started going to it and um, it's new. And I didn't bring my machine the first meeting. I, I doubt I will just because I find myself talking and chatting and um, just like troubleshooting with people. So that sounds great. I, I like that. I'm just gonna do that. Maybe I'll eventually have a project I can do that's small. I don't mind sewing on my home machine. <laughs> it's charming, right? <laughs> Yeah, right, Julia? I know. It's so true. Like, knitters take up a lot less space. <laughs> they just need their personal space and a room for their bag. Sewing's a bigger sport. Alright. Almost done, guys. And then we're going to put this collar on there. I could have done this off camera, but I felt like this was going to go really fast today, so I wanted to add more. And I feel like people think I'm um, hiding something or cheating when I do things off camera, but really, so I'm just trying to save time. You guys know I'm flawed, so I, I feel like um, you know I'm not trying to hide anything. I make mistakes all the time. I've made a couple mistakes on camera and then was like, ooh, I'm going to fix that before they notice it. <laughs> <laughs>
Are they mostly knitter, um, quilters, Julia? Is, is same for me. Most fabric stores cater to quilters. There's, it's easier to find quilting fabric and easier to stock a fabric store with quilting fabric. That's changing, thankfully. Um, so yeah, quilters, it's amazing what they make. All right, I think this is my last one, woohoo. Okay. This is reminding me of a project I did and I can't think of what it is, but it didn't go very well. I've blocked it out apparently. It's my center seam, halfway. All right. Mm, I'll leave that there. Oh, I have two pens here. Great. All right. Well, the last one I got a little antsy, Carol. <laughs> okay, so um, now I'm going to see how long um, my collar needs to be because remember I made that little change to my hem. So um, I know my collar's a little long now. Oh, interesting. Memory. What's a memory pillow? Oh, that's cool, Julia. They're making thing blankets for kids on the way to college and some bag makers. That's pretty portable. That's great. That's cool. What? So when you go and sew garments, like what kinds of, th do you have like a go-to garment project that you like to bring? Like something that you don't have to think too hard when you're sewing with other people? Or do you bring something that um, you can ask questions of other people? Like... What's your preference? Do you like to bring something hard that challenges you or something that you know what to do? Or do you like, do you like focus on like, oh, I'm only going to do this while I'm there? You know what I mean? I'm just kind of curious. I would have to have a plan because I know I'd be distracted, you know? All right. So I think the way I'm going to look at this is I'm just going to measure from the center back neck. I added a loop. Um, in fact, I'm going to stitch it down because it's actually not stitched right now. It looks like it is, but I removed those stitches and I just haven't pulled them out yet. There we go. I'm going to measure from the center back down to the hem. Slippery fabrics. Yikes. Oh, that's smart. You bring things then that you don't know how to do. So you can like kind of troubleshoot with others. I did. I used to do that with my knitting. You know, I either bring something really mindless or something I'm like, hey, um, what is up with this? I need help. Okay, so I'm just going to measure my collar. This is the seam right here. You can't probably see it because it's so dark. And then um, here is my center back neck. Wait, that's my center back neck. This was where my... Uh, loop was marked. Um, I'm kind of thinking, no, I'm going to measure it like this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to just kind of lightly walk this along the seam. It is very forgiving fabric. So I don't really want to pull. Forgiving is the uh, nice way of saying I could stretch the heck out of this fabric if I really needed to. <laughs> so in, in other aspects, it's not forgiving at all. Okay. It's probably good I didn't stitch too close here too because otherwise it would give it a false um, length measurement. You know, it would bind it a little bit. Oh, cool, you finished your mountain views. Now you have to cut two plantain tees and a kilo wrap. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome, Julia. Does she, what does she like to sew? Or he, your sewing teacher. So is it a school? Hi, Kira. Yay. Nice to see you. I love that new crochet pattern you came out with. 
Like of all the, I love all of them. Um, but that one really caught my eye. And then I was like, oh, that's Kira's. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to, that's about my end of my um, hem right there. So I just need some seam allowance and that is, I'm cutting it off, baby. Not very well either. Here we go. <laughs> Um, and then I'm gonna fold it. <laughs> That's awesome. You two know each other, right? Kira and Julia, I bet you do. Um, let's see, I'm gonna double check. Is this the one I just cut? Yeah, it's gotta be the one I just cut. I'm going to look at my cut one to the other side. And so what I'm gonna do, the way I'm, reason I'm doing that rather than measuring the one I haven't cut. Okay, I'm lost in my jacket. What's the expression? My, my I'm lost in this crazy amount jacket. Okay. Here we go. So I have already cut one side. This is the side I haven't cut, so I can tell all my little threads are there. I'm gonna measure the side I cut against the, si the other front as kind of a double check. Um, because um, if I if I did trim it a little too much, I can actually fudge the center seam. I don't wanna do that, but you know, that's where, it's my backup plan. But this also kind of just reinforces what length I want to do, so. Oh, uh, leather flute cases, dang. Hello, Eileen. <laughs> You got to want it. I, you know, I know Eileen, it's not easy. Like for anyone here watching and you want to chat with us, I know it is tricky. So you have to create what YouTube calls a channel, which is just another word for account. And it just um, is like a security measure so that people just don't go into random people's chats and, and say rude things and leave, you know, without have that, having that account kind of adds that layer and they get you, you know. So, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I met through, we met through book too. So, um, yeah, and we want you to chat. It's really fun when you guys can like chat with me, ask me questions, harass me a little bit, or, you know, and then um, also ask questions or talk to each other about what you guys are doing. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna look at my, I'm gonna double check this. Because I did the hem a little differently, it shortened my overall jacket slightly. And it's because I didn't want my um, hem of my jacket to be a seam. I wanted it to have an actual hem. Here to hear grin. <laughs> Why? Why did that? Did you retract that? What the heck? Why did it tell you that, Eileen? I don't know if you guys can see that, but it says it that YouTube retracted her message. <laughs> Nancy was getting a bug the other day by YouTube. Everything she was um, uh, writing was getting deleted, and I think it was because she wrote the word butt. We were talking a lot about jeans. It's going to happen, and I have it set up so people can write whatever they want. Don't test me, though. So, Okay, cool. That is a little bit longer. So now I'm gonna triple check. Cause that's what you do. <laughs> As we used to say, measure twice and then measure four more times, <laughs> then cut. <laughs> or count four times and then count, fi count five more times because we were always shocked at how closely we would count something and then it would be wrong, you know? So now I'm gonna fold it <clears throat> along the back. I could have started from the wrong center point, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna compare my fronts. Doing this while talking is obviously not as um, accurate. I'm not blaming it on you guys. Oh, you do want me to get it? <laughs> Typos are welcome. <laughs> it's so hard if you're if you're watching on your phone. Your phone is going to foil you. It just happens. Our phone sometimes is our worst enemy, you know? 
Okay, now I'm folding my collar. You missed my uh, my stitching, Kira, my winging it stitching. <laughs> I stitched my collar, but um, I, had a, I had a couple of frustrating moments there. It, it looks, it's rustic and charming, my stitching. It's not accurate and perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. So I keep hooking it on my needle. I'm doing this because I have to finish the collar before I attach it. And I, I really don't wanna struggle with this later on. So this is, this is uh, worth the time triple checking. Exactly, right Kira? Exactly. Yeah, uh, you, yeah, it goes in the trash. It's not knitting. <laughs> yeah. I'm just very loosely walking it, trying to pay attention. I keep losing my focus. But we're kind of one step away from being done with this jacket. So, and the collar is kind of a focal point. So I'd really like to get it, it nice, you know? Okay, so this is the end of my jacket. All right, so yeah, I am gonna trust my first cut line. That's my first cut line. And I'm gonna trim that off right there. And then I have to do this to my, um, this is exactly, by the way, this is the right amount. I am pleased to say that this, about one inch is about what I altered my over um, my hem. So yeah, AutoCorrect does, yeah, right. Yeah, Nancy, have you seen that site? Um, what's it called? Damnyouautocorrect.com. <laughs> There's a whole section on texts from my parents that, <laughs> Really funny. I haven't looked at it in years. It was it was really funny when I first discovered it. Okay, here is my um, other my lining of my collar. I'm doing the collar a little differently. Um, a few few things I'm doing differently. I'm not doing the lining on the outside. I'm doing it as the under collar, and I'm also uh, I stitched my top collar with the decorative stitching, so to kind of still add some interest. Uh, I just wanted to look at my. My collar is directional, so I'm going to um, make sure that I have it, all my mushrooms right side up. So that works, okay. I did it the length of it, not the, the width. Um, I'm also gonna attach my collar a little differently than the instructions because I can do that. I can break I can break the rules all I want, right? Alright, I'm gonna sew this again because I forgot my stitch length was just too too long. And then um I'm gonna finger press it. And then I'm going to Press it, press it. I'm gonna pull out a little bit of the stitching that I got on the first pass so that it presses nice and flat. All right, let's trim off the lining. It's a very wide collar. Yes, I'm eyeballing it. So 
now I'm gonna sew my collar on three sides. Right sides together and turn it. I love this lining fabric, Nancy. It was from the medium weight box, I think, um, but I, 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 I just asked if I could buy some and she said I could, so I did. And then I, I just replaced it with the one that was supposed to come in my box. I think what I'm gonna do um, for accuracy's sake is I'm gonna start from the center of my collar, go down one long side and across an end, and I'm gonna flip it and then do from the center and then do the same thing on the other side. Um, that's just so that I know that I'm lining this up. I'm distributing my fabric well. I'm not, you know, cheating. Ooh, do I want pink thread or, I think this is gonna be okay. Because these fabrics are a little bit different from each other. They kind of um, have different properties. They're both a little bit fiddly. They're both a little whooshy. I can fudge with either one quite easily. That's why I'm kind of winging some of my measurements and stuff. Because um, when it comes to the final seam, that's when I'm going to make sure I get it right. That's the most important. So. A little short there, but I'm just gonna do a smaller seam allowance on the lining. Ooh, do you think that's really that crooked? It could be. Let's see. Was I that bad? <laughs> I spent so much time stitching the collar that now I'm kind of rushing it. I think I'm gonna do this. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. That's bugging me. It's bugging me. It's bugging me. It's bugging me. The um. This is such a good example of how my machine pushes the top layer or pulls the bottom layer differently when it's wishy like this. This bottom fabric, the black, is very flexible. <laughs> it's why I've been trying to cut it a little shorter, but see, it's still growing. Even with all those stitches, those stitch lines in it, it's still growing. It's very um, springy. I'm being nice about it. It's it's very stretchy for a woven, you know? Sorry, am I, showing, am I showing my hands? I can't tell. There you go. it's nice and flat this is what's bugging me right here <laughs> I'm gonna check it looks pretty good though see it's nice and flat nice and flat <laughs> I'm looking at this line because I feel like this is the straighter one It's trying to push my lining fabric. It's so annoying. A little bit wider seam allowance than I want. Let's just hope. Did back myself into a corner there. You can tell when I'm rushing things. I do not sew as well, do I? Sorry. Okay. Here's all my little oopsies with the, uh, that little uh, tuck I kept getting. That was so weird. All right. So I'm a, now I'm sewing it from the top. Let's see how it acts this time. 
<laughs> Have you seen her projects that she does with her students, Julia? They're so cute. They're so creative. When I was doing that, that was the hardest part. I wasn't necessarily teaching sewing, though. I was kind of thrown into the fire with, um, you know, they didn't know how to sew, and they had to come up with a line of, of, of garments to walk down a runway, basically. And um, I would do little lessons, but they weren't really interested in the lessons because they weren't interesting things. But I'm like, you need to know these things. And they didn't really have the patience. See, this is growing. It doesn't matter what I do. Um, they didn't really have the patience to do a project. They just wanted to get to their things. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but... So I would try and just do something quick and dirty. I'll take it. Now we're just going to hope that uh, my front opening... Is the right one okay so I'm gonna turn this right side out I think I'm already doing this a little differently than the instructions so what I'm doing is I'm assembling my collar as a collar and then I'm gonna insert it on the center front in a seam rather than what you would normally do is you would sew the collar like I think it's um, I think you start with the lining you do lining to the inside so lining to lining right sides together sew the seam down the center front then you turn it to the right side turn under the edge of the top collar and top stitch down now i'm a big fan of doing that i do that a lot on my cuffs i do it on my collar stands i do it on everything you guys have seen me do that a billion times um but it's a really long opening to do that and with this wishy of fabric i feel like i might be setting myself up for some real big struggles if you are a beginning sewer taking on this project, I think the easier thing to do is what I'm about to do, but it makes my jacket not technically perfectly reversible um, unless you hand sew the side seam. So what I'm gonna do is um, pop open my side seam just a little bit. It's a big side seam. And I'm gonna sew the um, collar to the neck band, um, right sides together in one. <laughs> yeah, she does post really cute photo collages of her little projects. They're so cute. And I love what your students come up with on their own too. Are you asking what state I'm in? I'm in California, so I'm in Pacific time zone, if that helps. Hi, Danielle. <laughs> Okay, so um, let's see. I'm going to pop up on my side seam. I'm going to do it from the inside so that I can put a new back stitch. I've done a lot of seam ripping today. I'm not going to lie. I may not have time to do my archer uh, buttons and buttonholes, so I'll just do a separate stream, and that way I can also title it that. Then that way I, I can also, once it's done, I can try it on for you guys and show you. Because I can't quite try it on yet without the buttons and buttonholes. I wear a white shirt today because I want to wear this over for you guys. I won't compete with it. Ah, oh, awesome, Daniel. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're chatting. It's always really fun when people chat. Everyone's super nice here. They all work on all kinds of stuff from knitting to sewing. Oh, thanks. Yeah, but you know, I'm always learning too, Danielle, and you're gonna see that I make a lot of mistakes. Back me up here, chat. <laughs> I make a lot of mistakes. It's it's just part of it. Like, I, I sewing is hard. And you know, the thing about sewing is what's, you know what's nuts about sewing is not enough people respect it. And I don't say that as, um, Oh, thanks. <laughs> you like my hair? My hair is kind of a beast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, where are you, Danielle? You're in Connecticut, Karen? We have people from all over the world. But I, I feel like um, I think about, like, sewing. So often it's reinforced to me how little people think of how hard it is. And mostly it's just out of ignorance. They've never tried to sew before, and they don't really 
really know. But you see it in everything from things are really cheap in the store. So how could you think that it is that hard when it's $8, you know? Um, but a, a human being sews everything. There's some machines that do things automated, but not start to finish. It's just not like that. There are some things, but it's really rare and on a massive large scale. But everything from if your friend asks you, oh, can you make me this? And you're like, yeah, that'll be $350. And they're like, what? Why would it cost that much, you know? I love, look at all you guys everywhere. This does not have buttons. I was going to put it on the, the navy blue shirt I made the other day, Nancy, last week. Remember that? I'm just uh, putting my back stitches back in because I just pulled out this seam. I don't really want it to come apart anymore. And um, what I really don't like is when I'm sewing through an opening like that, like I'm about to do, the little stitches at the ends is um, get stretched out. Yeah, exactly, Danielle. It's a skill. You know, can you make me a dress? You're like, sure, that'll be a thousand dollars. They don't realize that like production sewing is a totally different thing. They have cut and sewn that garment in the design process so many times to get it right and to get it fast and to get it down, you know, down in time and money and everything like that. And then, you know, when we're doing it here at home, it we get one shot, right? Maybe we sew it again if we liked it and it went well, or we're just like, I'm definitely going to master that. You know what I mean? So there is those reasons. And so it is a skill, you know? All right, so I'm lost in the jacket vortex again here. So let me let me look. I don't want to get confused. Let me hold up my jacket here. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn my collar and press it first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, Louise. Okay, so um, let's see here. Or just like getting your pants hemmed, you know? It's like, oh, that'll be $15. Well, yeah, like, you know, it took someone, they had to thread their machine, they had to prep the pair of pants, they had to measure you, they had to interact with you, they had to write up the order, they had to make, make the time to do it. You know, you're an hour into that before you've, um, you know, sewn the darn hems. All right, let me just uh, press this and decide if I'm going to top stitch the edge. What do you guys think? I think I should top stitch the edge, and maybe that'll be my last stitch. Right? Yeah. Let me warm it up. But look, I kind of I like the way this is turning out. What do you guys think? I don't like that. You know, like having my, this is going to be my top collar and then, um, you know, that's my under collar. So dark. That's the color is just not doing it justice on the cam camera. Yeah. Fix a zipper. Right. <laughs> right. Louise? I know. <laughs> exactly. Don't you like when I feel like, um, just taking calling the fabric takes so long. It's your, it used to be my least favorite part too, Danielle. And then suddenly I kind of turned this corner at one point and I realized that, um, it was kind of a creative part of it and I could make some decisions on it, but I used to hate it. Cause I think like Anything that when you're filled with doubt, you end up just don't want, you don't want to do it because you're like, oh, what if I'm screwing this up? You know, I hate that feeling. And I think once you kind of turn the corner of, oh, I know how to fix if I get into a pickle or here's my backup plan, then you're a little more confident and it's more enjoyable, right? Thanks, guys. Yeah, I like this fabric too. Those one hour dress, I know. <laughs> Cutting, fitting. Yeah, exactly, Kira. That means you've sewn 15 of them and now you've gotten it down to an hour. Exactly. It's going to take me a bit to iron this. I'm going to turn the camera for you guys. I'm actually going to press it open, the seam, and then press it along the edge. Kind of like French seams. I find it it's easier. But I'm going to do it on the lining. I don't want to, I don't want to iron my interfacing anymore. It's, it's too tacky. Oh, so is the interface. The lining is really tacky too. 
It's like scooching. Why is this? Okay, I'm gonna do it from the interfacing side. You guys are entertaining yourselves, right? All right, I'm gonna press the collar. That is one big collar. Biggest collar I've ever <laughs> made. <laughs> Going over it one more time. Okay. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> You guys, I love it when you guys entertain yourself. <laughs> you got 10 minute meals, exactly. Oh my gosh. Oh, I will, I'll do a sewing tour, Danielle, but I, yeah, I am moving um, soon. Um, and um, right now it's set up to, I have a business that I'm closing right now that has been going really good, but I have to close it because of production. And so it's set up like a little factory. And this used to actually be the factory room when we had the machines. And I had four industrials and they were facing each other, like two and two side by side. And then um, I set it up for streaming once the sewist went freelance and moved her sewing shop to her home. And then um, in the big room, I have big cutting tables. And I don't think I have any, I might have pictures early on in my Instagram of it. And then I have a room that's the shipping and all the product and stuff, so. You're sewing on buttons. You can hear the steam. Dang, this microphone's so much better. First biggest cuffs on Archer and now biggest collar, right? <laughs> Your sewing's improved, Nancy, that's awesome. Oh, my ironing board, no. It, Julia, this thing's amazing, it's felt. It's, it's made in Oregon and um, my fabric store carries them and they have a little bit smaller one and this big one. They're a little spendy. I totally recommend getting the bigger one though. I love this thing. It's great, it's flat. Um, I just, I like it. And so then I got the like sleeve, um, not sleeve board, but like a sleeve ham for things when I need to like have that curve or the ironing board type of thing. But when, like when I did my mom's quilt, I brought my big ironing board in here, set it up because that was, it was nice to have it like falling off the table on both sides of the ironing board, you know? So yeah. All right. So I'm going to top stitch this. Oh, I thought something fell off my machine, but it was just the um, sleeve of the thing. I'm going to top stitch along the collar edge first. Looks so nice, doesn't it? 
and then I'm gonna top stitch the opening shut. So this is not the way the instructions show you guys, just so you know. The instructions are totally fine. You can sew it the way the instructions have you do it. Um, I'm just gonna try it this other way because I can. I'm gonna use my awl to kind of make sure the lining stays underneath as I sew it. Now, I, I do want the, um, the stitching to look good on the lining side, but I really want to make sure it looks good on the top side, you know? So I'm going to cater to that. So this is a good example of how my machine is pushing the top fabric towards me. I'm kind of smoothing it this way. It's just something my machine does because it has a lot of pressure. And I like it, I like. I set it up that way. It's not like a fault of my machine. It's supposed to be that way and I really like that pressure, but I have to kind of compensate for it sometimes. It's really handy for the heavy duty sewing I usually do. And um, when I got this machine last summer, I asked them to not set it up identical to my old machine, but to set it up a little bit more versatile for like garment sewing. And so far so good. That was the next scene, so I'm halfway. Ooh, this stitching's a little farther away. I, I didn't really uh, plan on doing this stitch, but I think it's a smart idea. But it does make it, oh, I ran out of bobbin. Why didn't you guys tell me? <laughs> Dang it, I ran out of bobbin. I'm only mad because it means I have to have a, a start stop and you know, I complain about start stops all the time, don't I? Dang it. That was weird. That's better. <laughs> I don't want to wind another bobbin in this purple. All right, so I'm gonna try and get my uh, start stops to be, to line up with my old, my like stitches there. Get rid of them. You know, bobbin. All right. Oops, sorry, I hit the microphone. So I'm just lining up the needle. It still looks a little messy. Thankfully, this is at the back. This is my center back neck seam, so it's gonna be underneath. No, this is my first time. It was, um, I have a subscription box and this was my subscription for, Nancy, was it for February? Nancy has it too. There's a few people here that have it. Um, and so I don't know if you're familiar with the subscription boxes, Julia, but um, the company that I do it through is called Needle Sharp. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I, I freely mentioned that I have it. It's nice, I really wanted to have some things um, to sew that maybe I wouldn't pick out normally. And also just see what the world is sewing when I first started the stream. And it's been really great. And you can skip a box or whatever. And so um, I already had another bobbin ready. Yeah. So my machine is industrial. And the way it winds bobbins is um, there's a bobbin winder on the side of my machine. And so what I do is like I unload the empty one pick the full one off the side of the machine, put it in there and they just swap them. So one's always winding. But right now what I have is I have black on the going on the bobbin and purple on my machine. So I don't wanna wind another one. So I have a full black one waiting for me because that's what I thought I was gonna need the most of for this project. And I am almost out of the black I have on a little bobbin. That's not too bad. I'll accept it. <laughs> I, you'll learn. I'm not that picky about a lot of things, but I am kind of picky about start stops being noticeable. I like the way this looks. The stitching is all wibbly wobbly, and um, I'm fine with it. I actually like it. I think it's charming. You know? So. <laughs> yeah, right, Nancy? I'm not sure either. Yeah, having them carry the fabric, is it, it's nice, you know? For the most part, I've been really excited about all the fabrics. I think I skipped, I skipped the the jacket box in the fall, and then the fancy dress 
in December and it's just because I don't need a fancy dress and I thought that the fabric in my box was this like Kelly green and I was really into it and then when I saw it I was like oh I like that but that's not really speaking to me so I'm not going to do it and I skipped the jacket one because I did the tamarack jacket in the fall and I didn't really want another jacket so I'm just going to top stitch this down just the edge it's trying to push so what I'm doing is I'm holding it at either ends and kind of just holding it firm and saying, nope, you know? Yeah, right, Julia? It, it is. Yeah, they, they send you the thread, the needle, the, um, here, I'll show you one of my boxes. I'll show you guys. There you go. This is the January box. I'm pretty sure. Um, and it was the, for me, the M Megan Nielsen jeans. Ash. Comes with the interfacing. Thank you note and invoice. Um, uh, there were Smarties in mine that did not make it. <laughs> did not make it. There was a mini anvil in here because this is all jeans making. There's all the rivets, the snaps all of it zipper thread uh, i may have thrown some things in here this is the pocket lining i didn't know that i was going to get that super cute oh i know it's a little overexposed sorry guys um and then you know she's got like a little quick guide to flat felt seam she always has a little quick guide and then there's my denim it's a stout box remember there was an anvil in here too <laughs> Which I was like, oh, I'm so excited I get an anvil. So yeah, that's pretty nice. We did the Mountain View so along um, in January, so I didn't make those yet. And then I had a show. But um, we will. I'll make those. I've never made uh, one that pattern company's pants before. I've never made anything from that pattern company. Those should be fun. is going really well. I'm forgetting that this isn't stitched all the way through the lining. It feels like it. Yeah, it is really nice. And so the way she, I feel like I'm advertising for her. I'm not. I promise I'm not. <laughs> there are other subscription boxes out there, but I'm really liking this one. I like her sense of style. It sometimes feels more East Coast than West Coast, which I, in a way is kind of interesting and something I've actually never um, noticed until now. You know, you can skip a box whenever you want, Karen. I think it's like in um, three month increments. Yeah, exactly. You can skip as many as you want. You can also skip. So, so I sh what I was about to say is, the boxes are divided by f in four categories, and she calls them a lightweight, medium weight, heavyweight, and there's a curvy box. Curvy's new, and so um, and the curvy actually, I really wanted a couple of the curvies really bad. Um, the lightweight, medium weight, heavyweight is only just like a denotation. I think the difference is price and maybe um, sewing level, but it never says anywhere on the site. I can't. I really can't tell. I don't think it's sewing level at all. I literally think it's just price. So I have the heavyweight box because the first one that I got was the um, um, Kaftan. What's that? The Charlie Kaftan. And I wanted it. <laughs> I really wanted it. And, I, and it was the heavyweight box and I haven't changed. But say I wanted the lightweight box. I can get the lightweight box. No, it's not for advanced sewers. It's for all levels. Nancy, uh, Nancy and I are totally doing different boxes. Right, Nancy? You're doing medium weight or lightweight. And she could probably speak better to how she feels about if it's advanced or not. Um, they're, they're like, I feel like what she does is she kind of is, is like, Hey, this might stretch your skills this month. And that's not a bad thing. You know, Ooh, it got really close there at the end. I'm not sure about that. I may fix that a little bit. I don't want any torquing. I'm going to fix this right here. And then I think there's another box. I just saw this other box. Is it called like, what's it called? You have the lightweight box. Yeah, that box has had some really cute stuff in it. I think the skirt you're getting is really cute this month, Nancy. 
And I like it because I've never heard of all of the pattern companies. They, they send a printed pattern. Yep, they send everything you absolutely need. Yeah, it is. It is, Louise. And so this is my this is mine. This is the heavyweight, and it was the Wixton Howery. And then I don't know what the medium weight was. This was not the lining. I'm going to tell you guys, this is not the lining in the heavyweight this month. I liked it. It's from the, this lining is from the medium weight boxes. And so I um, changed it. I asked her if I could buy some of it and she let me. I just want to be clear about that. She didn't give it to me for free. She didn't let me swap it out. I bought it. <laughs> I'm really glad I did too. Yeah, if you're not into the fabrics, you can skip a box. If you're not into the pattern, you don't have time to sew. They're stacking up on you. Um, you get one a month. And so our boxes shipped yesterday for March, and it's a skirt. Yeah, skirt. And then um, what's next month, Nancy? She just revealed it, right? Or am I thinking of seam work? I've had my seam ripper out a lot today. Okay. Uh, so see how I have this little like bubble. I'm gonna go a little further. I promise I'm almost done. Then I'm gonna put this collar in. <laughs> you guys are being patient with me today. <laughs> no, I don't think you're obligated, but Karen, I think. Um, is the lightweight less advanced oh, because the patterns might be simpler because they call for less fabric? Yeah, that's what I think, Nancy. I don't think they're typically less advanced. It just may be because it takes less fabric. Yeah, you can just buy a single box. Needle Sharp. It's called Needle Sharp. Tell her I sent you. I want her to know. <laughs> I talk about her a lot. I, I think it's really clever. And then she sells extra fabrics on her website and sometimes has a sale. I totally recommend it because she has some good fabrics. Okay, so um, I'm going to, um, I do not like how much that is wiggly right there. I keep wanting to take out just a little bit more, then a little bit more, then a little bit more. The collar itself feels nice and flat, so I, it doesn't feel like it has that in there. <laughs> Oh, cool, Eileen. <clears throat> yeah, so Nancy's right. You can just buy one box and try it out. You, she even has like, oh, if you don't like the box this month at all, you can do, she has backup boxes. And I don't think they're called anything except just like, that's just an alternate there. Um, all right, so I'm going to do it from this side because I really want the bottom of my collar to match. And sometimes my feed dogs will make it behave a little better if I flip it. It's something I've learned. It kind of it kind of eases in the fabric a little better. The feed dogs do. On my machine at least. There we go. Alright, let's put this bad boy in. Alright, so um I don't want right sides together, right? I want See, when I, when, you know, no, you don't have to buy a box every month. <laughs> okay, so this is how I want my collar to lay, right? So it's right sides to the lining, because I'm doing this different than the instructions. Oh, it's so much collar. It's like a belt. Where's the center? Here we go. No, it's this way. All right, so. Here it is. I can't even see it. It's so invisible. It's great. Okay, so um, this is where I'm going to uh, pin it a little bit so that I know that this is where it's going. When I'm on the inside of the vortex of this jacket, because... <laughs> Let's see, where's my seam that I popped out? Is it this side? Okay, it's that side. All right. 
I'm just gonna pin it in a few places so that it's easier to sort out when I'm on the inside. Oh, actually, maybe I'll trim off this extra here too. I'm just gonna trim this off so it's not in my way. And I don't inadvertently line up the cut edge to here rather than here, because it has to be to the shallower side. This line, lining, I, do you guys have trouble cutting rayon? I always have trouble. I always feel like it gets shallower or bigger. I want to glue it, you know? I know my top collar is the right width, so I'm not worried about trimming off this extra. You know? <laughs> yeah, it kind of does look like pinstripes. You know, I wish it looked like big chunky stitches. This is uh, my own way, Julia. So the way that the instructions have you do it, I find to be a little um, harder. And I'm not avoiding it because I think it's harder. Um, I just find that this way to be easier and I, I wanna do it this way. So the way the instructions have you do it, they're not wrong at all. It's a totally legit way to do it. It may even be more traditional to how the Howery is sewn. I actually don't know. Um, but you would sew it like you were attaching a cuff on a shirt. If you've ever done that, like a shirt sleeve cuff, cause you would sew to one side, like the lining, and then right sides together, and then turn it to the outside, and then top stitch it down. Yeah. So um, I what I did was I opened up a side seam, and I'm going to sew it from the inside of the jacket, right sides together, all in one, one seam. So it'll, in a way, kind of be faster, but I did do a little bit of prep. But so like, that was the other reason I couldn't have stitched my collar all the way through to sew it the way the instructions would have had it, you do it. And that's another reason why I stitched the collar this way. Yeah, right, Nancy? I know. Rayon, man. Okay, so. I'm looking for my middle here. I added the loop as well so that I can hang it up. I'm going to use this like a robe. I did the longest length and I did the size medium, just so you guys know. All right, so. Basically, I'm going to line this up right here where the um, hem folds. And I'm gonna sew it like this, right sides together, all the way down. It's gonna be more like that. <laughs> I'm a little off right there. I'm just gonna do a little bit right here so that when it's inside out, it's really easy for me to see. Set up for success, right? If you know it's gonna be tricky, do what it takes to make it less tricky. There's no, no shame in that at all. All right, I'm just gonna match up my, um, my hem to my other side so that they're as even as possible. They probably won't be, but you know, I can try. I still need to stitch down all my hems, but I'm gonna do it at the very end. Okay, I wanna make sure I don't twist my uh, collar. It's different, like if I were doing this by myself, you guys, I, you know, I wouldn't be so fiddly, but, um, you know, okay. Here we go, here we go, yep. Yep. All right. So I'm lining that up at the turn. I did the hems a little different too, Julia. I didn't want my um, bottom of my jacket to be a seam because it was supposed to be a seam right there. And I, I just was I'm just not a big fan of the way that looks. That was a preference. And it was really easy to do if you look at the first stream. Like, it was not hard. This is probably the weirdest thing I'm doing on this whole project. 
pushing my seam allowances up. Okay, now that's pinned. I've got like three anchors. Now I'm going to go in from the side seam here. Let me see if it's very. Okay, so this is my neck. This is my collar seam right here. The front of the jacket. This is my collar. It's very hard to tell. Here is my open side seam right here, right? So I'm going to reach through. I'm making it as obvious to me as possible because I'm, I'm sitting here live and I'm a little bit like, oh gosh, I got to get this right. So why not make it so that it's really obvious. So I flip it like that and now I know what I'm doing. And I already pinned that, so here we go. We're good, right? So, um, and now, of course, I want to switch to black thread. Do I want to switch to black thread? I'm not going to switch to black thread. YOLO! All right, here we go. So I'm through the side seam right now. It will get probably tight at some point. Um, see, look, I'm pulling this all through the side seam. So I'm looking for the shoulder right now. It might get so tight that I have to like stop and pick up and go. Um, oh, it's okay, Julia. I know I didn't think you, you know, it's that stream prayer. You probably will. Um, I don't expect you guys to watch it all at all. <laughs> all right. So let's see. I'm looking for my shoulder seam right now. So I have my next, um, like anchor, you know? Here it is up there, and then here is this one, all right? It doesn't all have to be pinned and perfectly flat. Oh, the jacket's heavy. Okay, I know the collar's not pinned properly. I'm just pinning all that together so that I can find it really quickly soon. Because when I get a little bit sewing into this, I am going to smooth this out and get it so that I know it's all going to match. Because this, these fabrics are so wishy, I know that they're going to fight me soon. One of them will, the outer one. Yeah, I feel like, I know that you guys probably really want me to sew things exactly the way instruct, the instructions do. And I do for the most part. Um, I don't stray too badly, but I'm not sponsored by anybody and it's my garment. <laughs> this is, this is, this is like full transparency here, you guys. So I'm going to do it the way I want to do it <laughs> at the end of the day, <laughs> but I will be totally transparent on how I do it. And, um, I will show you how to, so I don't think my way is the right way or the wrong, like theirs is the wrong way. I just have the way I like to do it. And in the more you sew, the more preferences you have because you're like, oh, I know I can succeed doing it that way, you know? Like I haven't done a shirt sleeve placket on live on stream. Can I do one? Yes, but I haven't done them very often. I haven't done one in years. So do I really want to do that live on stream without practicing? Not really, <laughs> but I will soon. Same with invisible zippers and zippers like that. I have not sewn a lot of those lately. My camera keeps drifting and it's kind of annoying. Okay, so let's see. Let's get the collar. I'm going to walk the collar. That looks good. All right, and then where's that? Try and keep all my threads to the outside too. I have a feeling that some of them are sneaking into the garment. So there's my shoulder. See the back, the, the outer fabric is a little looser. It's kind of annoying. I think that this is one of those times where um, the fabric loosens up. It relaxes once it's been cut. I am showing you who's boss, Eileen. You're right. Um, famous with like linens, hemp's. I love hemp fabric, but I hate sewing it. I, I love the way it looks when you're all done. Ooh, look at all that. I don't like that. That's so much to ease in there. Ooh. That's a lot to ease in there. Um, hemp grows significantly. It's just a nightmare. And this fabric does too. It's 
Sorry if you can't see. I'm just pinning. I'm just looking at it the whole way. See all of all that right there? I'm just going to kind of evenly distribute all this looseness. Keeping the jacket up here on the table because this is a perfect example. I do not want this pulling on the needle. Oh, yeah. Here, I'll take it out for you. That makes you feel better. <laughs> um, I, the, the garment, when it's this big and heavy, and this is a quite a heavy garment, it will, if it's on my lap or pull, falling off the table, it's pulling on the needle, which is dangerous. I say that often because I just want to remind you guys that it, it can be really dangerous. I'm going to have to walk my foot a little bit. Sorry, guys. It's going to be a little noisier. So I could put a stay stitch in this and that would um, like stay stitch in the outer fabric to kind of uh, make it easier to handle and I might stop and do that. This is non-negotiable. My shoulders have to match so I have all that to ease in there. The lining and the collar are matching perfectly. So it's definitely just this outer fabric relaxing. Not my favorite thing to have to do. I'm kind of, kind of, I'm pushing the fabric together, kind of making it go back to itself. You know what I mean? It's getting so relaxed. You can see, I mean, the fact that it loses these threads so easily means it's a very open weave. It's very relaxed. I say that about knits. Like when you're, I don't say that knits relax and get bigger, but this is a good example. Of like when you cut a fabric out like this, you want to sew it really soon afterward if you can. Um, if you can't sew it for a couple of weeks, I would wait to cut it out. I know that sometimes is really hard for folks because they have to budget their sewing time. Um, but you will be fighting it so much. It's worth maybe just cutting out what you're going to sew and then cut the rest out. Yeah, well, it's, it's I have a lot to get in here right now, Nancy. We'll see if I'm going to do it. I might not, and I'm going to, might have to take it out a little bit. We'll see. Where's my awl? Here it is. <laughs> my awl. It's like my security thing. So this is helping a lot more. I'm going to lift up my presser foot. Remember, I'm also through my side seam, too. <laughs> it's a lot going on here. Okay, where's my center back? Here's my center back neck. Okay, okay. There we go. Get it all smoothed out. Now that feels like a little bit too much for the lining. Is that the wrong piece? No. This is getting tough. I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna look at this, make sure. I might put a, uh, I'm gonna think I'm gonna put in a, a stay stitch for my um, neckline. But I'm gonna have to pull it through like this. Pull it through this hole. There's my starting pin on the other side. Definitely don't want to pull it when I'm doing this because I'm trying to get it to get a little smaller. I should have done this in the first place. I think if you're sewing the collar the way the instructions say, I would totally um, stay stitch this too like if it's a fabric like this because that is uh just as hard to sew as this I hate to say it but it's true as far as the um like the easing of this goes you guys are <laughs> do you see <laughs> sewing drama 
I may be ripping it out a little bit. Happens, right? Let's see if it's already helping. Eh. I think I'm gonna take out a little bit. I think it'll just be better if I uh, do a um, stay stitch to begin with. So you guys know Brooke's not here today. Guess what she's doing? She's taking a class on how to sew this jacket right now. I can't wait to see it. I'm so excited. She picked these gorgeous fabrics from I think Stone Mountain and Daughter. I don't know if you guys have heard of that fabric store. I think it's in Berkeley. This is some three dimensional origami mystery stuff. Indeed. I've been calling it the, I think, what have I been calling it? The crazy vortex. <laughs> this is the thing about sewing jackets and linings and things like that. You cannot think about anything else. <laughs> Just what you're looking at right here. <laughs> That's why I like sat there and meticulously pinned it at the beginning. So I'm like, okay, I know that that's all sorted out. Now, if I doubt myself along the way, I know that I've already set it up to be okay. So there's no reason to sit there and panic and then have to pull it and do it. Oh, see, I got some tucks there. Yeah, let's get rid of this. I think I need a new seam ripper. I wanna so I wanna get a few more. There we go. I don't really like taking seams out like this because it leaves more threads and it's a little dangerous to the fabric. Yeah, there's quite a few tucks I'm seeing. This fabric's really hard to see. So I think I'm gonna take it out to about right here. And then I'm going to put a stay stitch in and, and maybe pull the threads a little bit. Kind of like how we do when we ease the sleeve on an armhole. Yeah, this is the vortex of crazy, this jacket. I don't remember what I said last stream, but kind of was accurate. It's a lot of jacket and it all looks the same. You know what I mean? All right, let's see here. I'm gonna go like this. Boy, I've seen ripped a lot today, even off camera. I did the entire collar. I only have to go right there though, see? I'm almost there. The problem also with seam ripping is it stretches out. She, she what? What do you mean? She's talking about this live stream where she's talking about class. That's, it's, it's cool. I mean, I'm pretty excited. I think she was cutting it out last night too because she was picking her size. She's doing a short jacket and she might do different pockets than I did, like go from side seam to the collar seam. I think it's pretty cool. I saw that version in the hashtags and um, it, uh, that was one of the ones when I saw like more than one of the angled pocket, that's what made me decide. Right, I'm gonna leave these threads for now just so I can keep sewing. I'm gonna put more stay stitch. more stay stitch that's what i need right now where is it here we go all right move these threads look at all this It's, you know, nice, sometimes fabrics are worth it. Oh, she did, oh, I didn't see that. Hi, Fiona. How is it going? <laughs> My first half of this jacket went really easy. Now I've made things a little bit more uh, challenging for myself and for my viewers. <laughs> okay. 
So I think I'm going to pull the threads just a little bit. I probably could have made my stitch length a little bit longer and it would have been um, easier to pull, but at the same time, it would have also potentially given me some gathers. I don't want gathers. I am gathering it, but I'm going to ease that all the way along. So it's, I'm not going to do it so much that it pulls on the front of my jacket. Just doing it to put this fabric back to the length that it was. And I think I'm going to cut a thread here and do one here as well. So I don't have to do the whole thing. It's like when you're gath putting gathers in a, a skirt. You, you want to um, have a few uh, places where you're doing it so that you're not pulling all your gathers and evenly distributing them along a really long length because your thread can break and you don't want thread breaks like this um, when you're gathering putting gathers in a skirt and um, it just puts a lot of um, burden on that well we'll see Eileen I mean I know that um, this is a good way to make fabric um, the length that you want it without adding any gathers, you know? Cause see, look at that. You see how I have this little ripple now? But I don't have any ripples on the seam there. Just like when I do an armhole. And you know, it's kind of that thing of like ensure success. like. Yes, is this taking a little longer? It is, but at the same time, I really want it to turn out, you know? So it's worth it. Otherwise, it's just gonna be a, a kicking and screaming sewing <laughs> fit. <laughs> you know, like I'm gonna be forcing the issue. And um, if I had sewn this the other way, oh, it would have been really hard because the fabric's just relaxing so much. Like the you know ran may be like wishy and slippery and it does get a little it gets cut and accurate more often than not but it it is a tight enough weave that it's not going to grow and relax so because the outer fabric is growing and relaxing a tiny bit even a tiny bit you guys just think about it even if the the edge of the fabric has relaxed say an eighth of an inch over 12 inches this collar is easily over a hundred inches, right? So if it's that, if, if you divide that by 12 and do an eighth of an inch, that's adding up, you know? So it's, it, and I think it's a little bit more than that, or um, I think the collar is longer than that. So it's just, you know. We walked it, we know it will work. It's just fighting us a little bit. So I'm just gonna put a few gathering stitches in here and there. I would probably do this a little more evenly distributed if I were just sitting here doing this by myself, a little more methodically, <laughs> plan it out a little better. <laughs> Not that I'm blaming it on you guys. <laughs> But yeah, I'm doing it on the fly. And it was so easy to just put one long stay stitch in there. And then I realized at the end, like, I needed a few. Why did I just put one whole long one? But it's okay. We're not gathering it up. We can have some broken threads here and there. Not the end of the world. And, you know, if any of this is too tight, I can just release it as I'm sewing it. No problem. So you just slide it out. All right, I kind of don't really want to do any on the center front too much down here. I just want to mostly do it around the collar because of that curve, that's where it's likely stretching out the most is when it gets up here and around the, the neck. And also it'll be the easiest place to hide it if I do, if it does look a little bit like it's being eased into that seam, it'll be easier to hide there with the collar over it, draping over that seam, than it would be along the center front. I don't want the center front to be like so tight that it's making it angle up like this. Like, you know what I mean? Have you seen those? Um, 
And the Harry does have that kind of silhouette from the side seam that kind of does that kind of little angle like that, which is actually really elegant and I like. But forced, it'll just look like I forced it. So, all right, now where is my sewing vortex? Okay, here is one. Where's my other? Here we go. All right. Okay, now we're cooking. So, what should we sew next week? I'm almost getting to the point where I can shop for some fabric again. It's been a bit. So, was I doing this from the lining side? No, I was doing it from the black side, right? It was, right, right, right. Accidentally sewed my shoulder seam back on itself. So I'm just gonna re release that right there. So here's my guides. This is the way, I, this is how I'm keeping track. Like, um, I wouldn't wanna just uh, use the collar and go straight up from the hem and sew it to it. I, what I want to do is pay attention to where the center back neck seam goes and then ease the collar that direction, but I'm sewing from the hem up. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I don't shortchange myself with my collar later on on the other, other front, right? So I'm lining up my centers. Because I know those are non-negotiable, as I like to say. That has to be like that. That's my anchor point. So now I know that here is my whole front here. That looks way better. Look at that, it looks way better. Okay. That, look at that, that's already lined up. See that? Shoulder, and before I had pretty big ripple there. So now, and it, you can't even tell <laughs> that I drew it up a little bit, can you? See that? Can't wait to get rid of all this thready mess. This is a bigger distance, but look at that. It still looks really good. Great, I'm glad we took the time to do that. I know it's a little painful to watch. Eh, I just got snagged a thread on my collar. Okay, so where is my seam? Where did I leave that off? There we go. Okay. Get all these threads out of here. Threads out of here, what time is it? Oh good, it's only one, okay. Good, good, good. I have to be somewhere too, I wanna to look at my new office. My new workshop. I'm hoping the library ladder's in there. I'll do a new um, video today for you guys if it is. Yeah, yeah, Eileen, I was thinking the same thing. I actually do have the seam work Audrey, which is a, um, jean jacket like a very classic um i don't think it's too warm i mean you know i would much rather have it sew it now than in the summer oh this is going so much easier you guys so there's my hint if you sew this it's a really long collar biggest one i've ever sewn so if you want it to go a little easier put a stay stitch in on the neckline obvious information right I thought of it, crossed my mind, and then I was like, totally forgot, or maybe I was just ignoring that. Okay. Can you guys see okay? A better? It's so black, I'm sorry. Aren't you guys looking forward to the summer months when I'm not sewing all these dark colors? <laughs> I'm sewing just to the left of my stay stitch, which is technically kind of more on the seam line. Okay. Let's see, what's that lump I'm feeling in there? Oh, it's my loop, okay. I was a little worried there for a second, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, what's that lump? That's my loop that I made. Okay, there's, see, there's my loop. 
I was feeling the little seam. <laughs> There's my center collar. There's my center back neck. Okay, it's making sure. I don't want to accidentally line it up to where my loop was because I put some notches there. Right, the sewing fairy was trying to tell me that earlier. Like, look lady, don't be cocky today. I know when I'm being cocky and I'm like, okay, you're being cocky right now. You better rein it in, lady, because something's going to go wrong. And I don't, I try not to be on stream at all <laughs> because, uh, hello, I want to look like I know what I'm doing. All right, let's see. And my seam pressed that way, making sure there's no wrinkles. There's kind of a, it's kind of an angle right there. It's not as straight as I'm showing you. There we go. There's a little curve right here. Still sewing through my side seam. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, still a long way. Halfway though, right? Lining it up, my other half. There we go. I have my shoulder pinned, right? Where's the shoulder? Oh, there it is. Okay. Here's my shoulder. First, this jacket went together fast, didn't it, last week? really fast and now I have made two steps take <laughs> two hours <laughs> that's how it always is it's like that 15 minute pile you know those things where you're, it's like the opposite where it's like oh I need to hem all these pants or um fix that button and then you just sit there and put it off and put it off and put it off and then you go to do it and you're like that took me 15 minutes you know that pile Well, I don't know, Nancy. I'm making it look really hard. It's just a seam. Like, if I had pinned this whole thing, it would probably look really straightforward to you guys. But um, because I took it apart, you know, it's just sewn in a seam. So you, otherwise, the other way would have been like sewing a cuff, which I just wasn't a big fan of. I felt like that, that was actually harder to do. If this was all pinned, it would probably look a little less crazy. I think so there's my neckline I don't want this to get stretched right here I can feel it it wants to relax there's a curve right there and the curve means it's on the bias so here I'll pin a few things it'll look less crazy it's feeling crazy to me too just because it's a really long way to go Okay, this is when we need music, right? All right, all right, okay, I'm gonna pin this. Pin this. Now reaching inside and flattening out my collar there. See that? It's gonna be like magic when I turn it to the right side. Let's just hope it's all okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I know, it's not hard to make pants, is it? It's empowering. Pants are really easy to sew. It's the fitting that people have to worry about mostly. Home stretch, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Let's 
so much fabric. I think I have some threads I'm gonna have to deal with. See all these threads? I don't want them coming in my seam, so that's why I keep smoothing it out. I'm probably making it look fussier than it is. But the thing is, if those threads double back on themselves and go into the seam, they're gonna show on the outside of the garment. That's why I'm always pulling them out of the seam, seam's way. Yeah, when I, when I pull it through the side seam, Eliza, uh, maybe it'll be more obvious, because when, when I'm about to do, that I'm hoping I'm still in the side seam. It'd be a bummer if I wasn't. You have to do it through the side seam. Let's hope I didn't do something funny when I went to switch to fix it. All right, let me get rid of my pins here. But it still feels like it, so pulling it through. The side seam. Voila. Oh yeah, Eliza, that'd be awesome. See, look at that. Didn't think I could do it, did you? <laughs> yeah, the Morgans are the ones that have the button fly, right, Nancy? That's optional. Okay, so yeah, let's look at it. Let me look at it closer. I just wanted to make sure it was all like settled. So there's my seam. See, here's all the little threads poking through. Nice clean finish. Look at that's my inside hem. Okay, so now that you've seen how I do this, I want you to look at the hashtag. And I want you to see how people do this right here. It won't look as nice half the time. It's really tricky because the, you would have had to wrap the collar around it this way, where this way it wraps it around the collar. It's just more clean finish. So now I'm going to top stitch the hems down. But I'm gonna investigate it here. I'm gonna make sure I don't have any weirdness before I close my side seam. Uh, because I could, I could have some weirdness. There was a lot going on there. All these threads. There's my loop. Nice to see the loop, right? Yeah, the hem finish looks great, Julie. Cause you know the instructions, it's not wrong to do it the way they did it. It's a little funny right there. Um, at all, it's reverse, more reversible that way. But the way they have it is they have this seam on the bottom of the jacket like this. This is how it is. And my issue with that was my lining is so splashy. I would hate to for my lining to like creep under like that, you know. So this makes it so that it's not like that. All right, so I'm going to top, I'm gonna to maybe press the hem and then I'm gonna to top stitch it down. Same with my sleeves. And maybe I will top stitch around the collar and then I'm done. <laughs> so, it looks good. Oh, it's so much jacket. Oh, I have to, I have to close my uh, side seam. So, let's close the side seam. There it is. I'm just gonna edge stitch it shut, you know? I think the Morgans can be done with a um, zipper. Once I get this lined up, it'll go easy. Here we go. I thought someone walked in my door. All right, get the garment up here so it's not pulling on me. Here's my little seam that I opened. It's already been sewn once, so it kind of wants to go back together. 
I'm just going to tuck it all in there like that. Tuck all these threads in there. I'm not going to pull on them. Just like that. It stitch it shut. You could hand stitch it. I can feel the lump of where my um, where I started and stopped. And there you go. So that's how my lining is going to look on the inside. It's going to have that little ridge. I could do a better job than that. But, you know, it's on the inside of my jacket. Um, and this is how you sew a lined jacket without having to hand stitch it. It was actually my first lined jacket was in high school. And that's how I learned how to do that. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think, Nancy, I think you can do that. Yeah, exactly, Louise. I think you can. I'm pretty sure I've seen that Morgan tutorial somewhere on turning it. Thanks, Fiona. Thanks, Karen. Okay, so um, I'm going to iron it really quick. I'll turn it, and you guys can entertain, entertain yourselves, okay? <laughs> I think there's a good tutorial on how to do the buttons, Eliza, so... I'm sure you can do it. This fabric is so boingy. water in my iron. I only use the steam setting. It works so much better. Gonna kind of make sure that I get them in the right spot. So I'm just looking at where they are on the garment. That. Woohoo! Look at all that. <laughs> all these threads. I pull on them because I want them to go away. They're not going the other direction, so I'm not worried about them like unraveling the garment. If I cut them, the little ends will just poke out. But if I pull on them, it'll get rid of it, you know? Okay. Yep, 
Yeah, the pressing um, tack buttons are easier than rivets. Because rivets have the, the worry that the, the little sharp point will poke through the top, through the nipple of the rivet. So um, the tack buttons are a lot easier. You don't have to trim them or anything. You just do a whack really straight. And I have done that on stream one sometime. All right, so let's see here. This is how it's looking. So let me uh, press it. There's dust. Look at all this dust that got on my jacket. Eh. It, the thing is, my office um, is really got a lot of fiber floating around here. I don't really like that. Like, I could have done a better job right there, but YOLO, we YOLO'd it, right? Okay, so I'm going to stitch on the inside. I don't want to. I want to stitch on the outside, but... Um, I want to stitch on my hem, but the thing is, like, this is the side that's going to show, so that's why I want to do it on this side. And so if I do it on this side, oh, it's so heavy, um, I could get wiggly on this side, but this side shows, so I'm actually going to do it from this side. It's just how I am. I could do it above it a little bit, but... I would like the outside to look nice and even, you know? Oh, it's starting to torque. I didn't know that was on the table. <laughs> I didn't know I had to worry about that. That might be my iron right there. Maybe it's too hot for this. Is it torquing bad? I might be torquing too bad. I may need to pull this out. Maybe I should do, shouldn't do pink. <laughs> oh, I'm getting pretty good. Look at that. Not bad. I'm almost on that. Oh, yeah, I don't like that. This fabric, man. Not my favorite to sew. I, it's going to be amazing to wear. Just like all nice fabrics, amazing to wear, hard to sew. All right, I'm going to continue on. Because can you believe I put a start stop on the front of my jacket on the other side? And I'm going to top stitch this down. So Brooke was clever. She said she cut out her lining of her pocket in the self. And I think that that's smart because then you don't have to worry about it, you know, peeking under like that, you know? <laughs> no, Eliza, you guys need to do that. You need to talk about that. Je so jeans buttons are, um, here, I'll show you. <laughs> this is the jean button right here. These are rivets. Rivets are the little tiny nipples. You can see my jean button, I set it down too low, so I have issues. I might pop off my waistband and uh, fix it. Okay, I can't tell at all that I eased in my collar, you guys. Yeah, right, Nancy? Exactly. So um, I watched her, the closet case tutorial on doing mine. And I trimmed a little off of my rivets, a little of uh, that sharp point, trim that off. You don't need it. You don't need to go through because you punch a hole with like a, a sharp object, like an awl, you, and then you stick it through the hole. So you can trim off that point if it's a little too long. And you, what you do is you compare, you like hold up the, the um, shank of the rivet to the thickness of your denim and see, like, does it look like it might be too long? And yeah, and like, like Nancy did some trials. I did too. So I got, I think I like screwed up three of them. 
I don't I don't like putting on rivets. I don't like that uncertainty, but they do make your denim look more polished and you don't have to do it, Eliza. They're just optional. I don't even I don't even think I have them on my first pair of gingers that I made with you guys. It didn't even occur to me. And I hand, I put a, a wooden button on them. So you can do that too. Am I running out of bobbin? Better not be. I used to be able to tell when my bobbin ran out by sound. I can't tell on this machine anymore. I could tell when anyone's in the room can. Watch out for turkeys. <laughs> no, that's what we're here for. That I like I really like hearing what people do and how they solve things and then seeing it on Instagram. And by the way, I don't know if you guys are following me on Instagram, but um, this, if you if you do just look at this picture of this, you can see the actual color. It looks way better on there. And that's why the Facebook group will be great because you guys could actually post in there anytime and hopefully get some help. I can't believe I put my start stop there. What was I thinking? Shame on me. Start, stop right there. What is the world coming to? I'm taking out a couple stitches there. But what we really want to see is how did I do on the inside? There's my collar. I did. I could kind of feel it, but kind of not. See right there? I felt this happen. I may look at that later. See, that's not so okay. I may fix that. I won't do it right now. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, I'm going to fix the, I'm going to do the sleeves. <laughs> it's jacket, man. I'm, I'm glad the stitching is getting on there because um now i can see what's what brooke is sincere sheep oh yeah let's see let's me let me look okay okay i'm gonna look her up and see if she posts a picture of it oops oh i don't see the picture where is it julia are you still here is it in her does she have a story oh so here's her story so she has this navy blue on the outside and then she has this um chartreuse green lining with with stitch like cross hatch stitching on it she was kind of trying to decide on either one for the outer and i was like no do one for the outer one for the lining because i like both <laughs> i love those two colors together he called, got the two good ones on your coin pie and called it a day. Smart Nancy. <laughs> I would have done the same thing. I would have been like, I'm out on these rivets. I've run out of them now. <laughs> okay, here's my, um, I'm going to stitch, actually, I'm going to stitch the sleeve from the inside. Why not, right? Why didn't I do that on the underarm? I don't know. I think I've lost my mind today. The start stopped, you know? Oh, I know why I didn't do the bobbin. <laughs> my bobbin is a different color. Can you tell? Yeah, she was just cutting out her paper pattern. All right, I'm going to do this one from the top because my bobbin is a different color. I forgot. I didn't realize they were a different color until this morning. I was like, oh shoot, I don't have time to do the bobbins. All right. Mm 
right there on the seam. I'm kind of just making sure it's uh, even rather than on the inside. I'm hoping it's on the inside. My sleeves don't match now. That bugs me. I might take it out. All right, here we go. I actually think I'm going to wear my sleeves um, with them rolled up so you can see the lining. I mean, I'm not, I'm not really going to leave the house with this. <laughs> but <laughs> All right, let me try it on for you guys. There's my hook. I can hang it up. Really? Oh, that's great. You guys live near each other. You guys could do this a sewing meetup. That'd be awesome. All right. So I'm going to, I I really, I, I won't, I won't do both. Okay. What do you guys think? I feel scholarly. Less wizardly, more scholarly. Hey, there's the camera. Drum roll. What do you think? I like it. See, so my, my lining shows, obviously, right? Right? <laughs> I love the sleeves turned up, too. I keep going the wrong way. Okay, there we go. There we go. A lot better. <laughs> I need a wand pocket for sure. This is my wand. <laughs> I know, right, Louise? It's really long. <laughs> it is like, like right here. So. I think it turned out great. <laughs> I like the sleeves turned out, turned up too. Okay, so let's look it over. So this might be something at a later time I'll do a little maintenance on, like the um, switch out that sleeve stitching on. Maybe I will um, fix that hem. I made the longest length. Okay. So here is my collar. I probably should have top stitched that down, but it is pretty wide, so I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Added the top stitching here <laughs> very inaccurately. I did the, so the pattern has you do this flip the other way, but I wanted it to be less showy. Um, I angled my pocket and I added some hem coloring there. Um, there's a thread. And then the hem, what I did was I, let's look at the other one since it looks a little nicer side. I, um, well, see it's on there too. So what I did was I trimmed an inch off of my lining. That's all I did differently on the bottom, which made the lining shorter. So it pulls it up on the inside and looks more like a traditional hem. I did not do a good job stitching my hem. Um, but I'm going to check it out and see if I can do a little bit better <laughs> with jeggings and boots. I could do that. Um, and then the uh, collar, instead of sewing it, you know, from the inside, one seam, and then, then turning under the edge and edge stitching the entire way, which I was not, in, not at all interested in doing for that long. Um, I popped open the side seam and then just sewed it right sides together. 
And I, I know I just simplified that into like seven words and you guys all saw me having to ease it in. This, this fabric was very um, difficult in the end. <laughs> it was a lot easier last Saturday to sew this. Um, and then the sleeve, I didn't do anything different on the sleeve except how I sewed it, but I didn't cut anything. All I did was sew the sleeves right sides together instead of hemming them over the lining. So, you know, you this is how it would look anyway, except that it would be a rolled under edge, the black on top of this and edge stitched. Um, that's the only difference. So bearing that in mind, this looks the same. And the, uh, if you would have sewn it the way the instructions, it wouldn't have been. It, it's, it was called a viscous um, tinsel thing. It was called silky something. Silky something. <laughs> trying to think. Um, I, I saved, I, let me go see if I can find the fabric thing for you. And then I gotta get going soon, I forgot. Oh yeah, 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 I found it, I found it. It's called um, Black Silky Noil, N-O-I-L. And so um, I actually thought this was Silk Noil until I got it. <laughs> there we go. Black Silky Noil, but it's viscous and linen. So that's why it was growing. So it look, I don't know if you know what silk noil is, but it does look kind of slubby like this and it does have a really great drape. It's a tiny bit thicker than this. Um, I love silk noil, it's amazing. I even made pants out of it back in the day. Um, and then the lining is the rayon lawn. Hand or machine wash line dry, hand wash dry flat. Did not do either of those by the way. I saw a pre-washed fabric, I was like, great, I can wash this, I didn't even see that. I washed these in the washing machine, both of them, on um, cold, and then I threw them in the dryer for 30 minutes on low. <sighs> I wash everything. Let's see, what's this? Oh, that's the interfacing. Oh, and there's Ellen's card. <laughs> so um, that's, because that's how I'm gonna take care of it. I always wash things the way I'm gonna do it, so there we go. This is great, fantastic. I, I think I want a shorter one now. And I saw someone do an online version. I think that would be really fun too. Now it's really dark, sorry. Let me brighten that up a little bit. I'm such an amateur, aren't I? <laughs> All right, you guys, well, um, yeah, I can throw it in the washer and dryer. Yeah, it's easy care. I, I don't dry clean. I don't have that life. <laughs> it's my pocket. I need to take a picture for Instagram. Show everybody, hopefully I can wear it, take a picture. Yes, I love it. I really needed, um, <laughs> right, Nancy? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, I really am glad I have like a robe because my daughter, like I said, keeps stealing mine. She already owns three. <laughs> so <laughs> she better not steal this one. I like how it came out a lot. I love it. I don't like how finicky the fabric got in the end putting that collar on. I'm sorry that was such a struggle to watch. Um, but it wasn't that hard. Should have just put that straight stitch in or the stay stitch in and um, pinned it a few more. It may have, may, may have been less harrowing watching that. But it really wasn't hard. I just, like I said, I popped open the side seam and then just sewed it right sides together. Like don't, you don't even know you're in the side seam because it's so huge, it doesn't really matter. Um, and you have to do it that way if you wanna clean, clean finish it. So that's the only reason I have to go through the, through the side seam. You could not go through the side seam, but you would run out. Like if you were doing it along the collar, you would get to like right here and you would, you would just not be able to do it, be too tight. So, <laughs> all right guys. Well, I hope you guys sew this something this weekend or knit something, whatever you're doing. 
Hope you get some time to yourself to craft. Let me think about what I'm gonna sew next week. I like the idea of doing that denim jacket. I've never sewn a denim, denim jacket before. It'd be new for me. Um, talk about a lot of tack buttons. It's, it's Eliza that was interested in that, right? Um, that'd be a lot of tack buttons to put on that puppy, unless I did the other. So I like the stripes too, Louise. They're all wiggly, but you know, you it's really not that noticeable, you know? So I like it. I, le I love it. I love how this came out. The fabric's very nice, very satisfying. So bye guys. I'll see you next Thursday, I'm pretty sure. So um, I'll see you 10 a.m. Pacific, Thursday right here. Um, check out Instagram for what I'm gonna be doing next. It's so, so live on there. We have a new Facebook group. Um, post the pattern on Facebook so I can follow along. For the um, for the Jack Jean jacket, the, it's called the Audrey and it's by Seamwork Magazine or Colette. Um, so yeah, it'll, I always try and post all of that. I sometimes tag them, sometimes I don't. I feel like they don't really <laughs> want to be tagged sometimes, so I try not to tag people too much. Uh, but I try and make sure you know exactly who, I'm not trying to hide who I'm doing it. It's always hashtagged or tagged somehow on there. So, um, and I do belong to Seam Work. Um, it's very affordable. You get two patterns a month. So I'm going to try and start sewing those because I'm kind of getting behind on those and I haven't printed some of them out. So that'll be fun. And then we have the seam, the my needle sharp skirt. I have that boiled wool. Maybe I could do the jean jacket lined with bo boiled wool. That sounds ambitious. I don't know about that. We'll see. So, um, yeah, so um, I switched my website now. So it's so so dot live is my website, and it'll take you to the chicken boots, and that'll soon not be chicken boots, which is my business. And um, yeah, I think that's everything, right? So make sure you subscribe to the channel and make a channel yourself so you can chat with us because we love it. And I will see you on Thursday. Um, I'll definitely do those archer buttonholes. I'm really sorry if you came to see that. Um, I will do that soon. Unless you're just like, just sew the buttonholes yourself. Because <laughs> I've done it before. <laughs> so take care, guys. I will see you Thursday. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for coming by.